my name is Jack Gardner and welcome to another free lesson on a Friday. This week we are going to be taking a look at the dominant pentatonic scale, um, at least that's what I like to call it. But before we go into the lesson guys, as always I just want to ask you guys to make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, click that little bell for notifications. I make free lesson content every Friday and like I say in most of these videos, most of the content which I'm teaching is actually direct questions from you guys in the comments or by emails. So yeah, I'm very open to suggestions. Let me know what it is you would like to see. I'm also super close to uh, releasing my debut original music. Maybe in a couple of days, keep an eye out. Um, so yeah, without further ado then, let's get into the teaching part of this video. Okay, so what is the dominant pentatonic? Well, essentially, it could be a couple of things. I don't want the Harmony Police coming after me with this. But the way which I like to view it is as follows. I think of this as a pentatonic with these intervals. So say we're in G, like the backing track, we have the root, we have the major third, we have the perfect fourth, we have the perfect fifth, flat seven, and then the root again. Now where would you use this? Well essentially what's going on in this backing track is it's kind of like a G11 chord. If you're not familiar with what that is, it should sound something like this. Now, if we break that down, actually, it's kind of like an F major triad over a G root. So when you see this written down, you will often see like F slash G. That's how, I guess, piano players like to think of these things a lot. But as well, we should really as guitarists because the triads are one of our best friends and one of the most useful tools, really. So yeah. F over G or G11. Now that is a dominant seventh chord. If you think of that, what is that in terms of intervals? We've got the root, we've got the flat seven, we've actually got the ninth, and then we've got the 11 there. And then obviously that's just the flat seven on the top, it's just the octave. Now the backing track's kind of going between the two. We've got like this, which is kind of like G9, if you think. We've got root, major third, fifth, ninth. Very 80s, very cheesy as well, but it's good fun to play over. So anyway, yeah, the reason why this scale works in is because it contains, obviously, the root, it contains the major third, it contains the fourth, fifth, flat seven, and root. Now, really, the two key things there are the major third and the flat seven. Because that is what we need to build a dominant seventh chord. Think of our shell voice, and all we would need is root, flat seven, major third. Now, you might be thinking, well, can't we just play Mixolydian scale all over this? And the answer is, yeah, you can. But I think a lot of people tend to phrase really well with a pentatonic. I think it's one of the first things that we learn. We have all of these cool phrases. I've just dropped my pick. And then the second we learn full scales or the three note per string thing, it seems like musicality can sometimes disappear. That's what we want to avoid with this, and that's the whole point of this. You might notice that this dominant pentatonic, as I'm labeling it, is actually very similar to a minor pentatonic shape, which we all know this one. The only difference is that third. So most of your licks should technically translate. Now, even if even if you don't feel comfortable with this shape yet, like I say, it's a bit, it's a bit funny at first, then if you just focus on bending that minor third from the minor pentatonic, as in this note, or this note, or this note, into that major third, then it's gonna sound cool as well. That's the whole thing of like the blues thing with the, the thirds being ambiguous, you know. So, I mean, this sound really, it always reminds me of certain players or certain styles. This is a really cool lick that you should try. So we've got like, this is from the perfect fourth we're gonna start and we're gonna bend the third into that. So we get this. From here we're gonna go flat seven, uh, sorry, root to flat seven and just take it through the octaves. Almost sounds kind of like Eric Johnson, or maybe even some of like the Beatles kind of sound, you know, the... Really cool kind of flavor, if you like. So that's one way you could use it. Now, what I like to do actually, to give me more of a complete scale, or something closer to the Mixolydian scale, is to mix both this dominant pentatonic and a major pentatonic and switch between the two. That way we get all the characteristics. What do I mean by that? Let's just look at the intervals in a major pentatonic. So we would have like root, that 
that's going to be the major second, major third. Then we have the fifth, and then we've got the sixth, and then we've got the root. So technically, we've got the full notes from the Mixolydian scale now. So if you mix between this position, that's our dominant pentatonic, remember, and this, which is the major pentatonic, we now would have a complete mix of Lydian scale, if you like. So let me demonstrate how that could work over the backing track for you guys. Two seconds. So guys, I hope all of that makes sense and I hope you have fun outlining this kind of dominant pentatonic idea. Before I close this video, I've just had a thought now. I know some people might think of the dominant pentatonic as this, because again, pentatonic just means five notes. You could technically view it as a root, major second, major third, perfect fifth, flat seven, root. And that will also give you a different sound, and it also avoids that fourth. We're basically replacing the fourth with the, the major second or the ninth third. So, yeah, experiment with that sound as well. I just think that that one's a cool one to play and to get used to, seeing as it's so close to a minor pentatonic. And obviously when you mix that, like I say, with the major pentatonic, we have all the intervals for a mix of living and scale. Guys, thanks again for checking out this video. I will ask one more time, if you are enjoying these then and you want to support me even, then the best way to do that is to either buy my lesson packages. There are tons of these kind of ideas and examples in my One Chord to Groove class. Um, or you can donate. If you're watching these videos every Friday, I'll leave a link down there. They have been helping massively, especially considering that I am self-funding my own release, which, like I said at the beginning of the video, it's coming super soon. So, um, yeah, thanks again, guys. Also, let me know what it is you want to see next week. I'm always open to these suggestions. So leave a comment, leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe, click that little bell for notifications. Thanks again, guys. My name is Jack Gardner. Until next time, cheers. Thank you.